Hello, all attendees. <laughs> Glad you could join our webinar today. Uh, my name is Al Martins. I've got Brandon with me in the background. We're excited to have you uh, join us today. Some of you, it's uh, 14 hours in the afternoon. Some of you, it's a little earlier or later. Depends on where you are on Earth. But if you're a Camco customer, then you're probably on the Eastern time zone. So glad you could join us. You've got an image on the screen of an interesting machine, and it's gone. But <laughs> we, we selected this picture because automation and this particular image go hand in hand. Um, we can we can change uh, slides now, and, and we'll get into why. Um, you've all got Gibbs. Gibbs is an incredibly powerful package. And what I've noticed over the years is probably like a cell phone, you might be only using 30% of what Gibbs can really do for you. And it's understandable because it's a lot of pressure. You've got to get the job done. You've got to get the programs done. You don't always have that much time to get into, let's say, the depth of what Gibbs can do for you. But Gibbs Cam has a lot of powerful tools that are built in. And sometimes you, you may want to learn those with ancillary training, uh, or you may want to dig in on your own. But if you don't know they're there, you don't know whether to dig for them. So those golden nuggets, as it were, if we tell you where they are, then maybe you can get into them a little bit more and you can start to understand how they can help your workflow, which in fact will allow you to make programs faster, better, and smarter. So you see some points here on on the slide you know processes have always been something that have been very very exciting for people we introduced those in the mid 90s somewhere and uh, they're improved over the years and they're a great tool for people to leverage to make um, programming much faster macros macros are built in too so whether you know it or not you've got all kinds of macro capabilities there is some support in the software as far as the um, help menus to be able to get into macros to understand what they are. But if there are macros that you need uh, built, then that's something you can certainly talk to us about. We'll uh, um, get those looked at by our engineers and we'll figure out a way to make macros work for you in an even better way. And I'm not talking about custom macro B, I'm talking about Gibbs macros that allow you to help uh, with families of parts and potentially some other things. We're going to touch on that. Brandon's going to fly through everything. We're trying to get this done in 35 to 40 minutes. If we go over, um, we'll try not to. So feature recognition, you know, it's a catchphrase that has been used over the years. We do have the capacity inside of Gibbs to uh, manage uh, things like that with um, things like in Hole Manager and in Tool Manager IQ. Tool Manager IQ is an option, but everything I've listed here on this uh, that you see on the slide is actually part of the software. You know, some of the things that are also interesting in automation are things that you have on your machine tool. Gibbs certainly supports tool life management, and you can talk to talk to us about you know making sure that that's potentially activated in your post processors and leveraging that probing is another thing that is for automation and again there are a supported module that you can get for that and, and of course a post processor upgrade but it doesn't have to be a robot there's a lot of low hanging fruit that are available to you to generate automation and create automation inside your programming without having to actually um, buy hardware um, and leverage the uh, the Gibbs Cam software to your um, to your production needs, right? So I think we'll get Brandon on here. Brandon's got a whole bunch of stuff to really uh, show us. As regards questions, guys, there is a, a, a little tab there that you can uh, type in your questions. Feel free as we're getting through this uh, to type in any questions you have. We'll get to them at the end and review them. And if you've got questions that are um, not answered, then of course you can call in the tech support line and we'll review those with you. All right, Brando, let's uh, 
let's rock and roll and put some of my words into action here as we look at uh, your screen and see what we got going here. What you got, Brando? Thanks, I'll uh, appreciate that. And hey, everyone. Uh, right now, I just have a good old machine sim. Um, so I'll switch over to the first topic soon. But yeah, exactly what you're saying. I'm going to show a few of those things in action. I'm going to try not to be too quick, too slow. And uh, you can keep me uh, <laughs> I'll keep honest you. Uh, if you want to interrupt any time. <laughs> I'll keep you focused. Thank you, sir. So you're showing a, a machine sim, and I, I'm expecting this is a TMS that you're reflecting on? Not really. This was just to have something nice and pretty when it pops up, but I'm going to switch into the uh, mill feature to start. So All right. I'll jump into that file there. So this but while is, uh, Brandon is switching over, you know, TMS is another module that some of you might consider if you've got a lot of situations where you have multiple components on a on a tombstone or even on flat on a table. It it really is a helpful tool. Uh, so tombstone management is what we call it, and it'll help you manage all your work fixture offsets and automatically allow you to select uh, multiple parts and multiple stock bodies. Uh, to achieve, um, you know, if you imagine you had eight parts on a, on one side of the tombstone and you only had to do four, then you could actually just pick four or you can pick six or you, any multiplications of that and uh, Gibbs will take care of that for you. Anyway, another another opportunity for automation. It absolutely is in line with this webinar and I agree. Yeah, program the each op once and map them out. If they change, it's a lot easier to change and yeah, great, uh, great option there. And then what I have going on here is more of a uh, feature-based machining. So I've already added the features, but these features could be coming from a CAD, or you can also add them yourself. I'll uh, show you a couple areas here. And it's all about not having to put data into the processes. So. I figured this file also is a good way to introduce what you mentioned with the saving the tools and saving the processes. So I'll work that in here too and uh, into a couple other examples. But what I have here yep. is a part. You know, I have a, has a, a fixture, I have a machine sim for it, but I don't have any tool pads. So if you can imagine you import the part, possibly it has features, you know, possibly you want to add features. Um, I've done this here in the feature manager. So in the feature menu, there's a manager that manages your features and your attributes. And each of these pockets is mapped out and each pocket around this part is actually a uh, different depth, you know, different shapes. And they're all in this list here and it's a collection of the faces. So you can yeah. use that simply just to select, you know, a lot of people, mm -hmm. if they select a bunch of faces, little surfaces everywhere, they can save a feature so it's easy to, to pick them later. I know you know what I mean, uh, Al, some of those oh, yeah. uh, crazy sure. surfaces. Yeah. No, that's a great way to do it, and it's color-coded, so you, you get to marry them up that way as opposed to remembering what a, a face is. You can map the color, and I think Bob is your uncle, apparently. That's exactly it. And I'm going to show you how to work that into a process as well, because a lot of people see things like the mill feature tab and we'll see the whole feature tab later. And I'm going to show you how that could be beneficial for you uh, during programming and then possibly also during uh, revision updates. Uh, yeah. Revisions. So just take note, I have all the pockets here. There's pockets in the back. I've also added some attributes, so there's a couple ways you could come at this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and load a process because that's something that really saves time too. There are a lot mm -hmm. of little things that you can do. You can set even a certain file to be the default for a certain machine when you make a new file by using MDD default part. Uh, so you open it, it already has the tooling you want, it has fixturing, maybe some operations even. Um, I always bring up that Lang fan that kind of blows the chips and shoots coolant. Might be something you always run. So 
not having to add that every program saves a lot of time. Well, exactly. And, and what you've done is actually compounded the um, automation by utilizing the features and utilizing the processes. You can start to compound the, the time savings. Exactly. It all goes together and especially with uh, and then macros. I'll show you a macro in, in a while. And, you know, especially in a family of parts, that's huge or, or some kind of a connection to the CAD, like a SolidWorks uh, can really, yeah, compound and just save you a lot of time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load, you know, why make a tool when I have one saved? So yeah. you can load tools. Uh, and that would load the tool. And then there's actually something I'll show you in Gibbscam 2024 that holds uh, speeds and feeds, uh, or at least the uh, calculation data for them. Sure. The SFPM and the chip load. Of course, you could be loading your tools with Tool Manager IQ, which you'll probably touch on later too. You sure could. Yes, I do have that there. So we'll probably touch on that uh, at the end. Yeah. Um, so yeah, plenty of ways to, to just streamline things. So you're not making the same tools every every program or looking for a similar program to load in tools. Uh, especially there's a lot of there's ways a, to yeah, especially if there's multiple programmers in the same facility. So you've got three seats of Gibbs and three of you are, are creating the same tool. It's not overly logical. So if you can leverage each other's tools and each other's processes, then it obviously makes it three times faster because you're not having to triplicate the work as it were. And possibly sa safer as well. Yeah, someone doesn't yeah, that's true. recognize that a tool's updated. I mean, there's always simulation and such, but yeah. Yeah, yeah however that gets in there, um, in this one, you'll see Tool Manager IQ later. But in this one, I'm going to load the process itself. And you can see yep. I've set up some folders here so that I can just jump in and I have my processes here ready to go, which also holds things like feeds and speeds and your cut depths. You know, stock, mm. anything that's in the process is going to be saved in here. So when I go ahead and load this, it's going to load both the tools that those processes use, but also the operations themselves or the processes that will become operations. Yep. Perfect. And I did mention, you know, there is a way to save the tools with the speeds and feeds or the cutting data in here now. So that's a cool feature. Um, you do have to calculate, you know, at least once, but if you have the process that's loading, then you can just uh, probably take it away from there. And if there's any adjustments that you have to make on the machine, you can update them and, and keep them, um, you know, always the, the maximum efficiency. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking to, to program this part, and the usual way would be to come in here and I would have to set my coordinate system. Mm -hmm. I would have to set my depths, possibly some other things. But instead of doing that today, I'm going to jump into the mill feature tab. And I'm going to show you how that works, because usually it's all set to absolute. So you're entering the, the numbers yourself. But in this case, I have um, some features I'm going to pick. And they don't have to be in the feature list here. Uh, it could just be based off the, the surfaces. But I'm going to go ahead and set the different things, like entry clearance, exit clearance the top and the bottom of the cut. And I'm going to set those uh, using one method here. And that's going to be just setting uh, them based on whatever surfaces are selected. So I'm going to say maybe I want my entry you know, to be incremental from whatever yeah. the feature that I'm, I'm cutting is yep. you know, on the exit. So if it's higher or lower, it, it, it adjusts by itself. Uh, you can leave them. Um, Retract Z is always one that sometimes people will leave at absolute so that they know that it's always going to be safe. Yeah, fixed value. I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, start the cut and end the cut by looking at what I have selected and just do it automatically. And I've added a CS attribute here. So I can go ahead and pick that attribute. And I'm actually going to pick the other attributes uh, for the others as well. And I can do that you know, on the next I process, you, too. Brandon, that page that you were just on, mm -hmm. probably 10%, maybe 20% of Gibbs users actually know what that's for. Uh, and, and it's yes. such a powerful page and uh, dialogue to get into. So 
you know, ask for some training, ask for some support on that. Uh, take advantage of it. Anyway, Brandon, I'll, I'll let you run with it. But certainly uh, by utilizing that, now you can select your faces and magically m many things are going to happen before your eyes. <laughs> And that's why I'm, you know, talk away because it's actually <laughs> programming the part right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as long as I didn't misclick anything, then it should be uh, cutting all these pockets and take a look. Hey, that's where this pocket starts. That's where this pocket ends. So that one's a quarter inch. Maybe it's, you know, this depth, that depth. So oh, yeah, you need all to see the, the, the progress bar right down at the very bottom. That's right. Right, right where your mouse is. So, um that's a good place to look, guys. I don't know. I mean, I think most of you know that that's down there, uh, but it, it it's a great, great tool. I'll be redoing that, too, for the um, feature-based one. Uh, okay. But, yes, yeah. absolutely. You could see them kind of calculating there. And if you notice, the operations are up, and they were uh, cutting those pockets. So now I can run my sim here, powered by Gibbscam, of course. And it's going to cut those guys. And again, I uh, if you pick the, the wrong selection sometimes, uh, I definitely do. Uh, you just change it and you redo and everything's all good. Uh, but this is now going through my roughing here. And it knows this pocket is deeper than that pocket. And this pocket is deeper than that pocket. And it's running its roughing right now. And then it's going into the, the next CS. It knows enough this pocket is part of that CS. So it's going to the proper angles. And if any and of that running changes, the, the tools in the right order, right? That's right. And that's another one where there's some ways there to make that even easier where there yeah. is a plugin. You know, you mentioned plugins, and there are quite a few in there that are, are pre built in. And one of them is, is this find ops. You know, yep. so if you found you didn't have them in order, then maybe just look all the, the, the operations up for a certain tool and you can use maybe the, the move. You know, move to here or drag yeah. them, and it would only be a couple seconds to, to get that fixed if the, it was yeah, it's doing kind that of like a, a mini a mini TMS in in process. Absolutely, absolutely, and and some people do you know use the TP uh, or Toolpath Transform here, which allows you to duplicate operations and you know rotate around axes and all that. So. Yeah, ton, tons of things, you know, not enough <laughs> time probably to go through all of them, but you can you can see how fast that happened. And if you have the tie-in um, from a CAD, like I say, that you know, SolidWorks is one that comes up a lot. It even has an add-in on that side where this would represent your uh, feature list in SolidWorks. So uh, yep. if any time it, it uh, gets revised, you could push that through again and the features get replaced and you redo and whatever's changed gets uh, calculated automatically. And, and some useful. of the advantages to that, obviously, is that if you've got these features done correctly and the rest of this done correctly, it's almost like a mini macro. So in the sense that um, if you're planning a vacation and you needed to have some programs done, you could have some preset processes and features set up so that the guys, when they come in, they can just load them up and away they go. And that's exactly what I'm doing here, where I'm I'm tied in, tying this to these these uh, attributes, which really anyone could change these numbers. If they uh, have yeah. a, a part, you know, and they're changing depths, they don't even really need to know how to, to change it in Gibbs. They just need to know how to change a number in here and, and redo. So I'm saying... It you know, drive these guys off of an attribute instead that, that I've given numbers to. And so I'm saying, you know, use, um, the, I've named them all the same so that it's sure. easy, but yeah. yeah, you know, start the cut at the top surface ed attribute uh, and end the cut at the finished feature depth here. And if those change, uh, you know, that's no problem. And they're all to the CS. So you can see that, you know, I put a couple CSs a little different. Some are on center, some are on the face, but all the numbers are just the numbers you'd usually be entering, but exactly like you said, a little mini macro. And then, you know, yeah, it's the same kind true. of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see this is what you were talking about, where it's processing, you know, calculating away and doing doing what it needs to do. And 
if you do them one at a time or you do them all at once like I, I do here, you know, in the right situation, it can save tons of time for sure. No, absolutely. So those are the, the that tab is, is underutilized and we wanted to be able to show you that here. And the feature recognition, obviously, that we're um, managing within the feature manager is another area that you may not jump into, but look at your parts differently and uh, try to utilize them so you can take advantage of those uh, those automations. That's right. And the next thing that's coming up is going to be the hole manager, and that's another type of feature where you use it for holes and equally as useful. Um, so you can see this playing. It will play like the other one, roughing and finishing. You could see, too, if you're saving different tools. You can save multiples. Um, you know, together, so you can have all your drilling processes together. And, you know, it's nice, too. They stay linked like this, even if you move them around in the list. Mm -hmm. So if you ever get to the tap and you realize the drill is not deep enough, you just double-click the tap and the drill one comes up, the spot comes up. You can change the chamfer size, whatever you want. It's even if you got a, a thousand ops in there. So very, very quick and useful. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. The process is like, and you know what, to be fair, I think a lot of people understand processes and use them some of them don't really understand how to uh, create the the file management for them very well uh, but I, i've seen more people using processes than uh, the file management systems for the feature recognition absolutely and you see it more and more as people are getting educated it's harder to find you know skilled workers so you're, you're having maybe one skilled worker load up all those tools you know make sure everything's good in that and then whoever you know maybe a, a new guy to the scene he can just load that in and he doesn't have to worry as much as he gets started about those feeds and speeds and everything yeah. else so you got some hard jobs going on here yeah i apologize for the fixturing on this i <laughs> did not have time no. even for a tail stock so no, that's good that's weightless good. material <laughs> looks great you can see they're all tightened in it looks perfect <laughs> That's right. it. Even these yeah. were a little intense for the sim, so I turned yeah. it off. But. No, no, that's good. I like it. And that's a, another thing, right? Machine sim, another thing yeah. that can save you time so you're not worried about crashing. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be hitting any hard drives, that's for sure. No, that's never a good thing. Never. So we'll, we'll, I'll try not to here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do your best. So what are we showing us here? Is this the whole manager? This is the whole manager. So... Okay. You know, it's um, a part. Uh, this could be any part, flat part, a um, yep. bunch of angles, uh, you know, as long as they're holes. I just find I have, or, you know, there, there are customers out there that just save hours and hours with this, um, you know, on yeah. maybe roller dies and things like that. Yeah. You can fake it out for the pins as well. So um, notice I have a bunch of these holes. So these ones are not at the same angles. There's more holes in this row, more holes in that row, and there's two different uh, drill sizes here. Just going to keep it simple. No, um, it's a nice application because a lot of people don't recognize you can use it on on parts that are uh, on a, um, well, on a live tooling machine potentially, or maybe on an A-axis or B-axis. Uh, it's a rotary part, but you can still utilize these uh, these automations yeah even a five axis a dome uh, you know with some holes in it i've seen that and yeah yeah there's some pretty powerful uh, sorting options as well in here and notice great how for, i don't have any cs's yeah great for rock drills and things like that too absolutely and anyone that does any of that kind of thing knows how painful it can be especially if there are yeah. different angles you know there's easier ways to do the the cylindrical yeah. parts but you need a coordinate system, you know, for most of the time for, for these things. Uh, for sure. You can't just duplicate them. So I don't have any CSs. I don't really want to go around and make them all. And nope. maybe misclick. <laughs> I don't want to see that. This either. is minor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this part is minor compared to some we've seen. I mean, geez. Oh, of course, of course. A million holes at a different different angle each. Different sizes. I mean, no. different depths. But well, either way, I mean. Magic happened there, bud. Yeah, I'm going to use that whole manager you mentioned here. So that the purpose of that is just to extract the uh, the whole features. Yep. Um, you can do them, you know, one by one, but I'm just going to pick this thing and I'm going to run the automatic feature recognition here. And that's going to create these whole features 
So if you've ever seen those come in from a CAD, that's what those are. And you can always turn them off or delete them here. Um, but they definitely serve a purpose. Oh, exactly. Because you can see. Well, they're, they're holding the, the data of the hole even. Like they know exactly the diameters, you know, the chamfers, the different sizes. Again, I'm keeping it simple here, but, you mm -hmm. know, it supports a lot of things. Uh, the, the depths, the angles. So that's that's step one, you know, and that didn't take yeah. too long. No, absolutely. Next thing I'm going to do is just uh, create some groups here so that I can sort them and add some tool paths to them. So I'm just going to maybe make a group of those smaller holes. And I will make a group with the bigger holes in the middle there. And you can see how it's just almost like a, a spreadsheet, you know, when you're coming in here and you can change clearances, you can change depths on the fly if you want. You don't have to stick with what the model is. You know how models aren't always yeah. perfect. Sand and drill them all first and then drill them all and then tap them all, whatever your, your sequence has got to be. Whatever you want. Yeah. And that's where I like to go in because, you know, if I want to go around all these first and then around these, or if I want to go zigzagging to, to save a bunch of time, uh, all of that can be done in the group as well. So I could say, you know, let's just uh, maybe do a planar sword on a flat part or a rotary sword here and... You know, whatever I want to do. Maybe I want to do the uh, rotary direction here. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to say do it. You can even draw the order. You can see the numbers popping up there. Yeah, that's very handy. Especially if you've got a rotary table that has to lock every time it turns, you might decide, well, you know what, maybe I'll just let it sit at this angle until we get all them done. Exactly. Yeah, the, the, all the holes in the row, you might have seen the deviation yeah. too, you can give. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not jumping all over the place and going 180, 180 back, and yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to do what you did, uh, you said there. I'm just going to load a process, and uh, I got my processes here. So if it's about spot drilling, I mean, there are ways to do it automatically, too. This auto oh, is sure. works on, you know, your preferences. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the auto is... is it's another magical little little tool. Yeah, it would just kind of flash, and, and you know, you might have to change things here and there, but uh, it gets you close. Or you can you use... Know, it's kind of one of those things, Brandon, as, as you're running through that, that, you know, I think most of the people probably online today are generally machinists, and machinists look at a part differently than potentially an engineer. Uh, an engineer would say, oh, wow, auto whiz, got to love that. Um, <laughs> and it, it is really, really sexy. But as a, a machinist, you might say, well, you know what? We, we want to start here. We want to end here. We want to use the tools this way. And Gibbs gives you the flexibility to, uh, to really do both. It sure does. And I'll show you what I did there. Um, but essentially the same as the, uh, the, the mail feature tab, uh, I'm setting these ones they're spotting. I mean, I, I could set them on a feature, but in this case, I'm pretty much just using this to create CSs. And look at all those CSs that I don't have to make now. Um, you have the option to have them in different places. I, I told it to keep on center here, um, but you can have them whatever. And, and I'm essentially just using it for that. And then I'm telling it again, the, the clearances, the, the top surface and bottom surface, and just to use those CSs. And now I have some spotting going on there. Um, that we'll we'll take a look at after. Yeah, let's um, spot away. Yep, the spot's done. So I'm going to go ahead and load the next one here. Um, half inch drill for the middle ones. Uh, maybe that one. I mean, you might notice that uh, some holes are deeper than the others here. So I'm going to go ahead and say I don't want to put in the numbers, and I'm going to just come in here, do the incremental approach. But if I have something selected here, uh, then I can set the uh, segment. And, uh, yeah, I never remember to, set, to, to select. Yeah. But, um, In the end, we don't have to go through the whole thing. We're kind of running out of our time. But uh, the the idea here is, again, automation and utilizing, in this case, whole manager. Exactly. Yep. And doing segments. So I'll just run through this real quick here. Yeah. yeah. So you can see just taking those guys from this group so that it knows 
uh, what the depths are, so it's going to change all the depths on the fly. Uh, you'll see them there. You can see these are shorter than the others, and uh, yeah. maybe I want to do, you know, the next one. But yeah, we'll. Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's fine, Brenda. Yeah. Damn, the machine. Next is one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I'm Gotta passionate. get it all done. <laughs> well, that's just showing how quick it is too. If I, you know, hustle up here, and I'm, again, the segment thing is just uh, me, but. The main thing I want to show you is just the segments could be different every single sure. one. So, yeah, you know, it knows the sizes, it knows what it is, and you can tell it if I wanted to drill the bigger ones first, smaller ones, whatever. If I want to start with the uh, the 350 here and just go from the start of that to the end of that, uh, if I want to do the other way around, it's all the same kind of thing. And you know, sure, if those if every hole is different, then it, it really doesn't matter. No. Um, and then one more, and then we'll move on. <laughs> I want to get the machine sim up quick. Uh, I know. I know. you. <laughs> Completion. We do. Uh, I believe we have a little more time. But, yeah, there, I'll show you a quick yeah. macro after this, which I have uh, preloaded. Hey, yeah, uh, it's not good at this after time. an hour, it, uh, after the countdown's complete, uh, we'll find out. Maybe. I don't see any questions uh, yet, guys. It, uh, if you Oops. something comes to mind, drop it in there. If we don't answer it, uh, like I say, over the uh, this webinar, we can answer it uh, offline. So I sorted a rotary. Uh, we can break it down to the rows of holes, whatever. But you can see what I'm talking about. You know, it's sure. and whatever the process is doing. If it's packing, if it's doing this or that, uh, you know, it's all just a regular process and. That was nice and quick and sorted. And if there were a million of them, then yeah, you've just saved a lot of time. Absolutely. Of them are doing the right depths and all that. So, but yes, yeah, so I'll let it go for now. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's not only just the the time. It's also you, you know you're getting it right based on the model that you were given, because the information that that piece that solid model has everything you need. So That's there's it? no no need to kind of. Uh, fiddle through and and you know select a hole and do those things uh, manually uh, when effectively you can utilize the automation and the software. Exactly. And now I'm going to go into a little full auto mode, which you mentioned. So you know macros can be built. Some macros are already available. It could be as yeah. simple as making a you know a gear or some kind of like you know drawing a model vice. Seen a bunch of them, but this is one that. Uh, I always found impressive. So I'm going to run the macro right now. And this one comes up with uh, different prompts. So it's going to ask me different things about um, the part, you know, part number, the size of the stock, uh, the size of the part. So if it's a similar part, but it's always changing, then you can see here, I'm just going through, I'm putting in the info here, pressing OK. I'm putting in the stock size, whatever it uh, suits it. And everything is already pre-written. So once I'm done going through the prompts or some of them run on Excel as well, it's going to sure. do a little flashy uh, stuff and it's going to make everything for me. And you'll see that here. Notice I have no operations or anything like that. I'm telling it the size of the part, all the dimensions. And uh, when I press OK, you'll start seeing it generate the, the wireframe, generated solids, generate the tools, uh, the tool paths, everything. Um, loading processes automatically so yeah and the idea behind this particular customer is uh, you know they had um, I think in their case they had Nakamura's they had a cell of three uh, multi-axis turning centers twin spindle twin turret they needed to make um, literally uh, thousands of variations about 1500 variations of this component and they didn't want to be programming every one of them individually so uh, uh, they really needed automation and this macro allowed anybody with any level of education to go ahead and fill in values and automatically it would generate uh, a full-on program that they could send to their machine tool that's right I didn't do one one click other than filling on those boxes and pressing OK and then to turn the sim on but yeah, you can see it here. 
running. It's done the cut. The, the, the part number is what I entered. Um, it's going over to the sub now, whenever the transfer. I put the transfer in the middle to make it a little easier to watch. But wherever you want it to happen, that's where it's going to happen. So both the, uh, the sides are going to run at the same time here. And uh, there's, you know, the op one is already done and transferred and yep. machining off two there and finishing, you know, doing the hex, the number of flats I told it. So really, yeah, it's super powerful um, for similar parts. And that didn't really take too long, you know, and like you say, a novice yep. could do that. It was really, I think the, the average programming time was about two to three hours for each one of these. And basically now it became became computational time. So we're talking one and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah, what I should have been watching the clock, but yeah, we <laughs> that's why yeah. I wasn't stressing too much about the time, but we do need yeah. to move on. But yeah, the, the macros no, are fantastic. So then you know, obviously we we've got the the macros. What other topics did you want to cover? Did you want to touch on probing? Did you want to touch on tool manager IQ and raster vector? Exactly. Yeah, I had Raster to Vector up next and Tool Manager IQ. Uh, if you wanted to talk about those a little bit, um, you know, just it's... to touch on it real brief, you know, again, those are automation tools. If you, you know, you have a um, an image that you wanted to bring into Gibbs, um, you can. You you don't have to buy, you know, uh, uh, Coral Draw or or uh, Photoshop or whatever. You can bring in a BMP or a JPEG, uh, pop it in, and Gibbs will, in this case, through Raster to Vector, take that image and create the geometry necessary. And then you can scale that geometry and, and use it like any other geometry you, you've ever had in Gibbs, right? That's exactly it. It's just the regular wireframe. Um, you can see here uh, the finished product I have uh, in an image. Um, you can see it cleaned up there, and then this is the particular customer what they machined, so they mirrored it, uh, and, and yeah, exactly. Could be a logo, it could be a, a picture. Seen well, people do turn that, that image stuff. back. Uh, turn that back on. I mean, just have a look at the uh, the double byte font, right? So the Chinese characters. Yes. If you had to try to create that in in Gibbs, that would be a little painful. So if you ever had a situation where you needed to do that or generate plaques or generate other things uh, in a, let's say, non-romantic language, uh, this is a great way to do it. You know it. Yep. Plenty of satisfied customers. So um, that is one that doesn't come with Gibbs Cam. But again, yeah, it saves time and uh, it's uh, definitely worth yeah. a mention. Just like Tool Manager IQ is, um, I'll let this guy finish up. But yeah, Tool Manager IQ. You mentioned the probing. I don't have any uh, demonstrations of that one, but yeah, we don't we don't need to show that. But really, again, in, in touching an automation, if you are using probing, that's something you can bring bring in right away. And uh, at the beginning of a program, if you needed to set up your origins, if your machine supports that, rather than clocking the whole part, you could run the probe. And certainly that's a, a feature uh, that you can uh, talk to Bart about and um, see what kind of uh, probing implementation you want. But that is a, a, a great way to automate things. Or maybe even after a tool is finished cutting, if you want to make sure that tool is still there and hasn't broken, uh, it might be a tiny little 10th out tool. So you can start to uh, bring in uh, that type of automation into a machine that may have uh, probing already or you may be thinking should I get probing and for things like this um, Gibbs is is ready to roll with it you just you may need an option here or there or a post but it makes uh, makes the job that much faster yeah and I expect it to get even better I mean they just added another process so it's just getting started and yeah very yeah. useful you can see the checks here maybe it loops to recut uh, you know compensates for the the uh, the inaccuracies and yeah. Yep. No, great, great for setup and stuff. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, let me, we'll touch on what tool manager and give people an idea that basically tool manager is, uh, is a, another automation style. And as I mentioned earlier, if you've, 
especially if you got multiple programmers in a, in a facility, whether it's in one building or in, across uh, the country, you're able to share that all the tools you've been able to generate, tools and fixtures, um, it's a great way to um, load them into Gibbs. So you've already created them potentially and you've got processes with hundreds of tools. You can go ahead and bring them straight into Gibbs and then uh, group them, map them, and now everybody in your organization has got the ability to use them. And, and you've also got Fritz. If you're if you're on the web and uh, you want to use AI to find out the best feeds and speeds or what tool should be used, um, Fritz is an AI option that's in there. It's actually included, uh, but it's a it's a great way to isolate uh, some information uh, that you may not have known. Well, hey, what's the tap drill size for uh, half inch thirteen? And ask it. And magically, it will come back and tell you what it is without ever having to leave uh, Gibbs. So like your own personal assistant uh, giving you information that you, you may not have had. You don't have to call your buddy. You don't have to call the, the foreman or whoever that is. Uh, just make sure you have some connection to the to the web and it'll, it'll go ahead and give you that kind of stuff. Which I don't have on my license yet, so you can see. <laughs> yeah, get it. Uh, get get back it, to me. You'll get back to me, there, Fritz. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, it's just a another tool that, and this is not a, a tool manager IQ presentation, but it is about automation, and uh, this will make your life easier. That's it, and that's all I had uh, on the docket. So I think we did make pretty good time, um, but I guess. We'll throw it up for some questions if anyone uh, has asked any. I see a couple over here. Um, sure. I think uh, we got a question that says, uh, do you offer support for organizing the tooling in Tool Manager IQ? And I think the answer, you know, is our grouping functionality. And wouldn't you say that's right there? Uh, Brando? Yeah, I don't know if they mean uh, to actually get all the tools in there, uh, you know, initially so that they, they have a database already, but there is a default database that you can choose to load, uh, which I have on mine. Um, there is also the grouping for sure. Uh, as you add the tools or uh, once they're added, you can create groups. So I have a tool list here and, you know, those are the tools in that tool list. and. Like you said, anyone can be on this, and there's actually an independent uh, standalone version as well that you don't need GibbsCam for. So if I ever wanted to go see those, and I'm in the tool crib, or I'm a purchaser, then I just boot up the uh, standard, or the, the standalone, and it's connected to the same database. It can be a server, and you know everyone's on the same page here. Um, well, I think Nick have have those tools I just added. If we've answered it, but if we have, Think of the groups as playlists and, you know, in iTunes. And you can set up a list for a machine. You can set up a list for a job. You can set up a group. We, you know, we call them groups. You can call them whatever you like. But effectively, that's the best way to group them uniquely. And now you can import those tools into Gibbs. If you were speaking about what Brandon was saying earlier and you wanted to pre-populate to a manager IQ, I think Tool Manager IQ already comes with a whole a whole bunch of drills and taps, but you can go into any Gibbs file, have your tools in there, and then import them in and start to build your your database with tools there. Hope I got that one covered, Nicholas. Uh, we'll, uh, we can talk about that further if you like later. Um, Greg says, do the models have to be designed using whole wizard? How come I'm missing? Is there a way to? Oh, sorry. Do the models have to be designed using Whole Wizard, or does the modeling process have an impact on Gibbs? Can you see these as well, Brando? I don't. <laughs> I'm afraid to to change my screen because I'm presenting. No, no, but... no that's that, that's fine. But the, yeah, you you you're good. So the answer is um, no, though no, I believe. You, you don't have to use it. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying, but any solid model, if you have holes in it, um, Gibbs is going to find your holes. 
Yeah, is that so what you usually say? call them dumb solids? If there's no features, then yeah, it, it makes them for you. Yeah, they don't have to be pre-populated like in Pro E or some other packages. I hope I under, understood that, Greg. Um, Robert says, "How do you import lettering or photo?" Well, um, if you've got it as a JPEG or BMP, uh, talk to Bart about um, getting raster to vector. It's really an inexpensive option. You can bring in a picture of your dog if you like, and it will bring it in, and now you can uh, machine it away. So it can be whatever whatever you've got on that BMP or, or JPEG. And that has been done. Customer with a dog passed away, you, you've seen it too. I know that's why you said it, and it looked great. Yeah. What is this one? All right, so somebody else asked about macros, you know, if you're just a... a a job shop can you use macros in inside of that scenario and I guess the answer is really yes it really depends on um, what you're trying to, to automate if you've always got certain features that need to be present on a component then it macros are great uh, utilize them anywhere you want you don't have to have a family of parts it may be just specific feature types that uh, you're looking to um, incorporate in certain components on a regular basis anything you have to do more than once on a regular basis then a macro would be applicable i believe camco also has some free ones on their website too that you can try making uh, chuck uh, vices or fixtures sorry and things like that and they they size themselves to the, to the part and yeah yeah check it out yeah and and certainly you know just ask uh, camco ask bart about training uh, and about services. So if you have a, a scenario where, hey, you know what? I'd really like to have a macro. Uh, you don't have to learn it all on your own. You can uh, certainly ask, uh, ask Bart and uh, he can provide you uh, information about what it would take to build one or uh, potentially get trained. Yeah. All right, well, I, I think we've got through most of our questions. It's uh, as always, it's been a pleasure to be with you all. Um, yeah, looks like the parts are done. I'll get these off the machine. <laughs> Even if it's over the max, that's not bad, right? <laughs> you want to brush them off first. And uh, remember, of course, to, to, to reach out. You know, I keep saying Bart because, you know, I know him. But you've got the whole team at Camco. Contact any of us, uh, uh, Beth or Jody, and, and they'll all be able to... Uh, to get what you need uh, in relationship to this. I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, time. Thank you for your questions and we've enjoyed uh, being with you. Have a great afternoon, guys. Yeah, thanks everyone.